Welcome back guys, uh, it's been a couple of weeks since I made a video, uh, mostly because I haven't made any progress and that's the purpose of the channel at the end of the day. Um, we chucked an extra screen in here, copped some criticism for always having the um, grid showing here uh, when this is an off-grid system, so fair bump. Uh, that's on a Raspberry Pi that's behaving like a servo controller, so it gets this Zigbee RS485 delivers information about our grid tied solar. Um, it is a separate install. This install is not attached to it whatsoever. Um, so now I've got two screens side by side. That's just, it's useless other than the fact it's logging how much power goes back to the grid and how much the uh, bore pump used. This is our off-grid system. But that's, uh, that's not what's got me stopped um, on any progress at the moment. What I'm stopped on is getting these things, to, these JK BMSs, to talk to the um, servo controller. Yeah. Everybody says, oh, why don't you just use the serial bus? Okay, fine, you can use that, but only one of these will instruct the charge and discharge currents. Right, so if, if I had three of them, I have to say that the maximum charge or discharge current is one shelf, right? So in my case, that's about 200 amps or 250p. Um, the thing is, I can charge faster than that, and I want to charge faster than that. So what I need to know, what well, I need all three of these to be able to affect the D, uh, the charge current um, and the charge voltage. So in order to implement that, I can't use the serial library. Um, so what I need to do instead, over here, is I need to use the BMS CAN, right? So if this was a pylon tech or if it was like an SMA or some other battery system that has capacity to speak to this thing, um, they would be able to instruct it that, hey, reduce the charge current because one of the shelves is not taking power or increase the charge current because we've got low shelves, etc., etc. etc. So the question is, how do you make that work? Um, the CAN bus that comes out of these things isn't actually supported, right? And it's not that because there's a special protocol or anything like that. That's one of the, that's one of the things about this that people don't seem to understand. There is no protocol, right? There's like CAN is it, or if you use the new term, two-wire automotive interface. Um, there's just messages that it listens for, and that's all, right? So SMA and Pylon Tech and other vendors, they just produce the correct message for this thing to hear. And when this thing sees the message, it assumes that it's CAN bust in, therefore you trust it. Um, now, I've already made the mistake of doing, <laughs> doing a test with this. And as soon as I produced the correct message, well, it thought it had a BMS all of a sudden. And then in half an hour's time, or it wasn't even half an hour, I don't think, when it didn't hear from the BMS, it shut my fucking house down, which is really irritating. So all we have to do is emulate the way that Pylon Tech does the individual BMSs produce the right messages, right? So I've got my servo controller for my caravan here, because the caravan's obviously not finished yet. Um, I've got an ESP32 and a CAN transceiver, and I'll tell you what, avoid these CAN transceivers like the fucking plague, because there's so many of them that are counterfeit, it's not funny. So um, anyway, I managed to find a couple that aren't, but I'm never doing that again. Um, so this ESP32 is plugged into a NUC, sitting up there, um, so I can remotely access a development environment. Um, it's CAN transceivers on like pin 14, 16 or something, and it's going through this really ugly long cable. Oh, it's the blue one. This blue cable uh, down here to the CAN BMS board. All right, so appreciate this is a mess right now. It's a mess because I'm trying to figure something out. Uh, but let's jump on the computer and let's see if we can produce the correct messages to uh, to make this thing think it's got to be. Right, guys. So following on from what I was saying in the shed, uh, what we effectively need to do here is before we can make all three of the BMS's talk to the servo controller we have to establish some communication with the servo controller. So I've uh, gone online I've found someone has politely uh, done a CAN bus dump uh, of a pylon tech battery uh, and fortunately for me this is this helped answer a bunch of questions for me. They are emulating a pylon tech battery using Python. Uh, which is awesome because it, it helped to indicate to me what it is that I needed to produce to, to have the servo controller uh, recognize um, my CAN bus emulator. So uh, when I say that, I say that loosely because I'm plagiarizing the shit out of all of this. Um, so anyway, look, they, these are all the different messages that we need to produce. Um, I dropped it into coderdbc.com and it produced um, some classes for me. What I eventually realized is I didn't need to do any of this because um, somebody already had an Arduino style project that I was able to plagiarize some of their functions out of. So as soon as I started Googling, uh, like there's some and bitwise and or bitwise uh, functions in here and I 
am useless at that. And so when I was searching around trying to understand how they worked, I came across another guy's um, DIY BMS, and he's already made a CAN bus. Uh, he's given it the ability to speak to the Victronic controller as it is, and it's already based on Arduino and ESP32. So um, once I went and did all this work to, you know, basically start writing my own, um, I realised that somebody else had already gone ahead and, and done it. So I was able to... Um, for the sake of this test, I was able to actually go and, and just borrow some of his. So he has these really handy named functions for Victron Message 351, for example. So in this case, this gives us the charge voltage limits, the maximum charge current, and the maximum charge discurrent. Um, he had quite a big, complex uh, project because it was actually an entire BMS that he's built himself. Uh, that doesn't work for me because I've got the JK BMSs. So I'm looking for a starting point that lets me talk to three of my JK BMSs and produce the correct messages that they think it's a stack of Pylon Tech batteries, right? So I won't, won't bother trying to explain all this because that's not why we're here. What we're trying to achieve is uh, whether or not it's feasible for us to, uh, to produce these messages. So this is just a blank, uh, this is just the servo controller that used to run our caravan. It will run our caravan again. It's doing nothing at the moment. It's got nothing going on. Um, the key thing for us is, uh, does it have CAN BMS? And yes, it does. So cool, it's on 500 kilobits, which is the only setting. It's either that or off. Error active. It's not receiving any messages from anywhere. It's just sending. So this is as dumbed down as I can possibly get it um, just to make it work. So here's our main loop. Installs the driver. Uh, sets various whatevers um, and then in the end it just sends some messages right so it does have a receiving function and then all we're doing here is we've plagiarized old mateys um, CAN bus messages and we and then I format them into the in the appropriate format and, and send them down the canvas so what we should see here is we should see some uh, packets populating here once we uh, once this thing starts to transmit um, but also in the list of devices we should see a new device appear and we should suddenly see a voltage just here so let's upload that and see what happens so this will take a couple of well it shouldn't take too long i hope but um this uh, is a very underpowered virtual machine it's just so that i can remotely work on the esp32 without having to get up and check what it's doing or run a really long cable to it so here we go writing 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 as soon as that's finished Fingers crossed. Hey, look at that. We've got a 35% full at 0.5 volts. So, all right, we can produce messages that create a battery. What's the, what's the key takeaway there? How's that going to help me to have uh, like three separate shells on three different BMSs? I've called this JK Mux um, because I feel like it's multiplexing. Probably a bit of a dorky name, but whatever. Um, how is this going to help me to know that I've got multiple shelves? And that's a problem I haven't really figured out whether or not I want to trying to resolve just yet but uh, what I plan to do is which one of these is it under well there's our 250 amp charge current limit and our 300 discharge limit uh, a device under one of these it should know how many shelves it's got three battery modules online that's the key takeaway right so um, if this ESP32 which has got two dedicated UARTs. I believe it has a third one, but it gets used for something else. So I've got two, a couple of options here. We could use multiple ESP32s and get them to form a CAN bus amongst themselves and produce their own custom CAN messages that the servo will ignore. And then you could have hot swap over, right? You could say this is shelf one, set it on some dip switches, and this one listens to shelf one and nothing else. It produces CAN bus messages uh, when it sees that there's other shelves present, it could say, I'll wait and I'll let somebody else produce the message. And if they don't, after X time out, I'll assume they're not there and I'll, I'll produce the messages, right? That would prevent the inverter from breaking. But that's also expensive because it means that you have to have an ESP32 for every single shelf and you have to have a CAN transceiver for every single shelf. Um, and I don't know if I'm happy to do that. The guy who did uh, DIY BMS looked like he used RS485 or, uh, or I2C to communicate from a controller, which was ESP32 based, down to cheaper controllers. But in that scenario, if this one ESP32 dies, and depending on where you source them, they could be cheap and nasty, so that's quite possible, uh, 
your system will break and you have to go through and you have to tell the servo controller, hey, clear out the uh, the BMS control. So I can show you the, well, actually not, uh, can I? Yeah, probably can. If I go to our production system, we have had a couple of really, really bad days. In fact, it got so low that it actually dropped out on us. Um, I didn't have the discharge C rating set correctly and uh, it had a conniption one morning at 22% and, and dropped the power off. Um, we should see, is that a device? A uh, little charger, where are we? No. Um, I don't look at this enough to um, remember exactly where everything's. Ah, oh, it's networked operation. So you see here where it says BMS controlled? If I now go and plug in a charge controller uh, into this uh, other servo controller, they will say that they are BMS controlled because there's a BMS now present in the system. So I don't know which one of these messages causes that to happen, but I think it's the one that sets um, the charge discharge limit and the charge current limit is the message that also indicates to these that they're now under control of, of a BMS, right? So that's, um, I don't want one of these controllers to stop working and have the system fail. Or can I have two of them where they share the load and both of them have a CAN transceiver and between the two of them they'll have multiple UART ports. So if I use two of these and said that, hey, your shelf one and two and your shelf three and four, you know, for future expansion, um, then I could have a hot spot between them. And, you know, one of them could say, I'm going to wait five seconds and I'll send the messages. But if I don't hear from the other guy, I'll assume he's not there and I'll send them on his behalf. Um, and then that could reduce down the number of active shelves. So if we go, um, where is it? You have to forgive me, guys. This is uh, not scripted or planned. Um, so, oh, this is just me faffing about around my house as usual. One of these messages is producing the details about the number of shelves. Which one is it? 351, 377. Here we go. Set bank and module text. So, one of these, one of these is producing uh details about the shelf numbers so data.text what's that one going to be char text that's getting set somewhere what we can do is pretend let's just let's just do as an example what, what did i say that voltage was uh, it is at five one so i reckon there's a number in here that's 510 here we go Let's set that voltage to 55 as an example. Um, I hope I got it right because otherwise, uh, got some unusual stuff could be going on. It's just compiling, and again, I apologize, this is not the fastest computer in the world. I could give it more resources, I'm just too lazy. So, compiling here. And what we should see is the moment it's uploaded, this should go from 0 0.51, so not connected because it stopped producing, that was quick. Now it's at 5.5, so we need, hang on a minute, <laughs> that's the commented out ones, we want this one here. I don't know why it's got this divide by 10, is that just to get accuracy, is that just saying like, hey, yeah, we can have multiple decimal places after the fact? I suspect it is. Um, because that will turn this into a floating value instead of an integer value. So I assume that's why it does. I don't, I don't know. I really, yeah, that was really quick. So as soon as it stops producing messages, it knows it's not there. Woo, 55. All right, so, and the current is currently zero. So let's say it's at 30. And again, this is at 0 0.1. So let's give it 300. And then we'll jump back to, once that compiling is finished. Come on. Not connected. We should pretty quickly see 30 amps. Excellent. All right, so I think that answers the question. There is the appropriate messages exist, and Pylon takes a perfect example of it, that there could be multiple shelves. Uh, so now all I've got to do is, even the RS485 interface, 
uh, on the JK BMSs is, is actually a TTL interface. So it's not a it's not a one to many. It's a it's a one to one. So you can use any of the TTL pins on the ESP. I'm led to believe. So I don't know that for sure, but led to believe that you can use the uh, uh, what do they call it? UART ports on the ESP32, and you could speak to the JK BMSs. Or do we listen for the CAN bus messages? then re-repeat the CAN bus messages again. But then how will we determine? I don't know what the dictionary looks like. So this is a bit of a learning curve for me. Uh, anyway, I think that's a good start. I'll, uh, I'm going to be off to work again uh, in a day's time, so I'm not going to get any more time to work on it this week. But I feel like it's totally achievable to make multiple uh, JK BMSs speak to a Victron system just via, you know, um, emulating Polantec. Um, but I'm not, I don't want to have this attached to my production system because I know damn well, oh that's right, I did set some of these as high and low when I was mucking around with it. Um, that's, a, that's the message there that I really want to, I really want this one set because it'll be in multiples of. Um, I've pretended this is my big battery which is actually 1812 amp hour, but um, yeah. So look, I'm yeah, confident, confident we can get it done. Um, and when I get back from uh, this week's worth of work, I'll, I'll rip into it again and, uh, and see what we can do. Anyway, cheers for watching.